viewers, welcome to Perth Dive Watch, or at least uh, sometimes uh, it feels like that to me on this channel. Uh, today I'm going to feature another piece from Audaz watches. Uh, what I like about Audaz, uh, I've reviewed a few of their pieces uh, over time, uh, is that their, their marketing is kind of no nonsense. There's no fancy stories, there's no you know super marketing, definitely no celebrities and, and no models. It's very straightforward. They are just here to make quality tool style divers uh, you know, for practical use. Uh, today I, I'm featuring the newest model, which is I think uh, launching you know, right now or, or very close to uh, this time point. Uh, it comes in the typical uh, you know, practical case. So without further ado, let's flip the camera around now and take a closer look at what's in here. All right, guys, so here we have the package on the table, this kind of a very practical, you know, water kind of resistant type of material. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind it. I quite like their practical casing. Spinability is actually excellent. This is at least a four and a half, one of the best spinning types of cases, if you like that sort of thing. Okay, so let's just open it up. Uh, there's not much in here. I'm just going to put a watch aside. Um, you know, that many spare links that I remove, you know, it is size for a massive wrist, that's for sure. Um, and, you know, most of you guys don't really need to read the manual, at least I pretty much never refer to it, but, you know, you can pause it and look at this if you wish. Okay. All right. So just put that aside, open this up and show you the watch in more detail. So guys, over here, we have the Audaz Sea Armor Automatic Dive Watch ADZ 2075-03 is the specific model, uh, 03 for this gray dial variation, which I chose for this one. There are, of course, other variations, and you can take a look at the website uh, if you're, of course, interested to find out more. Uh, the MSRP, as with many other of their pieces, is going to be 400 USD, but with the 30% discount code, which I'll provide you guys, uh, it will be under 300, right? Around 280 is what it comes out to, and I think it is worth discussing this watch uh, considering that pricing. Okay, first up, guys, as I always do, let's talk about the movement, which uh, you know, no surprise, like other Audaz pieces, is the NH35A. Uh, just going to quickly show the details down the left side here. Uh, I'm not going to read it out, of course. There is a unfortunate ghost date position, and they have actually left the date wheel in here. You can feel it if you open the crown uh, to the you know the date setting position. It is actually still in there. Some people find that really annoying. Uh, I, you know, for me, it's kind of take it or leave it. I don't mind it. I understand why they have to use the NH35 rather than the no date uh, variation of the NH series. Uh, rated accuracy, as you can see there, in this case, actually very well regulated. It is running about plus two seconds per day uh, in the week that I've had this running. So pretty darn good. Okay, talking about the case now. Now this, uh, guys, make no mistake, is a massive watch, 45 millimeter diameter case. Uh, nearly 15 millimeters in thickness, so 14.8 via calipers. Uh, 24 millimeter lug in this case, I think it's the biggest one I've seen from them. Most of them have been 22. And then the lug to lug distance, right? I'm just I'm going to measure to the you know to the the edge of the lugs here between my thumbs. It's massive at 52 millimeters. Uh, I, I would say too big for someone like me. Overall weight on the steel bracelet, right? With those five links I removed. 209 grams if you leave those links in it actually comes up at nearly 240 grams i think that may be the heaviest watch i've ever featured on the channel with all links inside as it is it is also one of the heaviest i've featured finishing wise okay polishing on the bezel right pretty obvious there uh, and then the case itself uh, because it's so massive i i you know, I don't mind that they've gone for full brushing. So longitudinal brushing on the top surface there, uh, longitudinal brushing or horizontal brushing on the side, uh, and also longitudinal brushing on the bottom surface of the lugs and the crown guards there, okay? Uh, the uh, case back has circular brushing on the periphery, and the middle, uh, you know, as you can appreciate, is pretty well done. I, I really do like the way they do their case bag. This is a nicely deep uh, stamped uh, case bag with you know polish on that you know, trident anchor, I suppose you want to call that. 
right? Nicely done on the case back. So a nice screw down case back, screw down sign crown, of course, in this uh, dive watch with, I think it's, you know, again, I think this is a black PVD type of ring here, pretty nicely done. Uh, the water resistant rating, uh, I guess they've gone a little bit modest here. They've only gone for 200 meters, which is, you know, fine for 99.99% of us. Uh, not going to be a problem at all. The previous one I reviewed was more full-blooded, uh, kind of super diver at 500 meters, I think. Uh, but this one's 200 meters. Absolutely fine for, you know, vast, vast majority of us. Uh, the dial-wise, okay, let's talk about the dial now. This one is uh, in matte gray texture, right? This, I, I, I wanted a kind of gray variation this time around, so that's why I chose this one. Fairly nicely done, very fine. If you want to call it sandpaper, it's going to be a very fine sandpaper. It's got applied black colored indices, or black outline at least, printed details on the dial and a printed chapter ring on the flange that you can see there. Uh, the hands are again black colored to match the indices, sword style hands with a red, uh, you know, splash of color lollipop seconds hand to match, uh, you know, that bit of splash of color on the dial itself, uh, lollipop uh, for the loom application. Uh, loom wise, it's got blue colored Superloom Nova. They don't actually tell you it's BGW9, but I assume that's what it is uh, because it's on all the usual spots and it glows pretty darn well through the night. There are no problems glowing through the night uh, from all their watches in my experience. And of course, loom shot right here for you guys to see how it glows in the dark. Okay, so surrounding the dial is uh, a 120 click unidirectional uh, dive style bezel with a fully loomed ceramic insert in polished finishing. Pretty, you know, pretty well done. I, I don't mind that at all. I think it's actually pretty good. Let's listen to it now. Five. Right, 10. Right, 120 click unidirectional dive style. I'm just going to uh, just show some love to you guys here, right? I'm going to point it at a random direction. We call this immersion therapy. So for those of you who have OCD and you have to have that at 12 o'clock, this is what we call immersion therapy. You know, put up with it and get over your compulsions. I'm looking at you, my mates, Graham, Jeremy, James, uh, you know, <laughs> care for you guys a lot. So this is for you. Okay, so on top of the dial is a flat Sapphire Crystal, they always give Sapphire and they do tend to do it flat and that's all that that is. Okay, pretty good AR, I gotta say, look at it straight on. Pretty darn clear, you know, in terms of viewing of the dial there, I have to say. Moving on to the bracelet, right, H-Link style, they've gone for this time, it's very, very solid. They do tend to do very solid uh, bracelets, longitudinal brushing that you can see there. Right, it does have a, you know, it's, it's kind of a lighter brushing on the side. Uh, polished centers, of course, you can almost see uh, me in the reflection there. Uh, very solid end links. Uh, it is push pin and collar, right? It's not just simple push pin, it does have the collar. So I guess I can give that a bit of a pass because push pin and collar is just about the most secure you can get, uh, better than screws in terms of overall security. Uh, the, the class, unfortunately, again, uh, for Audaz, one of their weaker points, right? It does have fairly solid arms there, but Otherwise, it's a bit of a Chinese OEM press metal class, four point micro adjust, not even a push button release, it's friction release with a very fairly flimsy, uh, you know, uh, press metal keeper there. All right, so that's the entire description. Let's just snap it on my wrist now for a wrist shot for you guys. And there we have it, guys, the orders new Sea Armor Automatic Diver on my 17 centimeter wrist. Uh, on the other side, right, the bracelet sits pretty well, but if you look at the watch, I think in most uh, sensibilities, this is considered, you know, definitely too large for a wrist of my size. Okay, so that's how it looks like. So remember, it's nearly 15 millimeters thick and 54 millimeter lug to lug distance, overall size of 45 millimeter diameter on that case there. Okay, so let's just take it off now. In the end, you know, my thoughts on this watch, what do I like about it? Uh, you know, I think Audaz, I'm going to say much of the same thing that I did for the Sea Armor, a very solidly built, full-blooded, tool-style diver. This is what this is, right? Quality execution, I really think the case is very well done, right? They do have good quality cases, and it reminds me a lot of, you know, for example, Spinnaker cases at, you know, budget pricing. 
Uh, great stamp case spec. I really like how they did their case spec. And, uh, you know, ignoring the class, the bracelet is also very well done. It's a quality bracelet. Uh, all this, you know, with the Seiko movement, Sapphire and ceramic for under $300 is pretty compelling value. I think I think that that's what I can say about the Audaz watches. Uh, at the full MSRP, however, you know, these are the weaknesses at 400 I think the pushpin and collar and that poor clasp may prove, you know, and really quite off-putting for some people if you're going to fork out $400. Uh, the massive over-the-top sizing, right? And, uh, there's no way around this, right? It's massive. It's thick. It's got a very long lug to lug distance that's too big for many people. I think that precludes uh, wider appeal for their watches. It definitely also precludes versatility because you shouldn't be wearing something like this on any kind of formal, semi-formal type of occasion. This is just too tall and sporty, I would think. Uh, and then overall, Right, I would say the design, you know, quality, but nothing you haven't seen before, right? All these elements, you know, the sword hands, the indices, the bezel, even even the bracelet you've seen before, uh, nothing completely original. So therefore, I would say the designs remain somewhat generic, you know, and, and not everybody might like that. If you want a completely original design, this is definitely not that. I mean, all the elements, all the all the combinations, uh, you know, I, you don't see exactly this combination, but all these elements, uh, you know, none of these are groundbreaking, I would say. Okay, so those are my thoughts on this particular Audaz. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys, my review of Audaz, newest watch, the Sea Armor. Let me know what you think about this piece. It is definitely a chunky piece. And uh, I suspect not for everyone. Not everyone wants a, a piece that that is this huge, and definitely not everyone can carry it. But let me know uh, if you own any Audaz watches. I would certainly love to hear your experiences, guys. If you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week. Always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.